Hello, accounting superstars. Welcome to the Accounting Superstar channel. You're in the right place if you want to learn accounting. Boy, I was looking at my uh, hair, and I haven't had a haircut since February, and this is now May due to the coronavirus. And um, I don't think it looks too awful, terrible bad, but uh, it's getting pretty shaggy. So hopefully this coronavirus thing will will be done with it in a month or two. I'm hoping. So today we're going to learn about accounting for warranties. If you look in your textbook, which I hope you do, uh, the examples that they give uh, are sometimes a little confusing. For one thing, they tend to use really large numbers. And a second thing is that they um, mix up, they don't make clear uh, the two different kinds of warranties. And so oftentimes when you're reading through their examples, you're wondering, well, what warranty are you talking about? So uh, to make it clear, there are two different types of warranties. One warranty is called an assurance warranty. It comes with your product. There's no extra charge, but the fact is when you buy the product, the charge is built into the sales price. The second type of warranty is called an extended warranty. And this is when you can buy a, a extra coverage for your product for like uh, the next two years or and whatever. Uh, for example, I, I bought a computer. In fact, the computer I'm using right now, uh, I bought it a few years ago and I bought um, uh, an extra two-year extended warranty on it because I'm not that tech savvy and if something goes wrong with it, I wouldn't know how to fix it. So I did buy and I did take advantage of it, although I don't think I got my full money's worth. Fred Snowblower Service, he offers um, a one-year assurance warranty that comes with each snowblower and Fred offers an extended warranty. So let's read through some of this. Starting at the top, Fred offers a no additional charge, one year assurance warranty with each snowblower. That's the warranty that comes with the snowblower, no extra charge. Based on experience, Fred estimates one year assurance warranty expenses to be $25. So when somebody buys a snowblower, within one year, usually they'll come in and it'll cost about $25 to fix that snowblower. Each snowblower, including the one-year warranty, retails at a total cost of $1,500. No extra charge. That warranty is built into the sales price. Fred purchases snowblowers at wholesale for $800, and, and this is similar to other examples that we've used with Fred's snowblower service. Fred also offers a two-year extended warranty. The one year that comes with the snowblower plus two years People can have a grand total three-year coverage if they like. The optional two-year extended warranty is sold to customers for $100. So this is an extra $100. Based on experience, Fred estimates two-year extended warranty expenses to be about $60. So Fred will make a profit on this. Now, a customer of Fred's, we'll call him Joe here, customer Joe, bought a snowblower and an extended warranty on September 1st. So let's go down to the journal entries and see how this all works out. So coming down to the journal entries, and what I'm going to do is split the screen so we can see down below. Here we go, there we are, good. So on September 1st, 2001, Customer Joe purchases a snowblower and extended warranty. So the amount of cash that Fred is receiving is $1,600. And that's split up here with uh, credits of sales revenue. And I made a note here, the assurance warranty is included in that $1,500. And the customer is buying an extended warranty also. And we credit unearned extended warranty revenue. Now, unearned extended warranty revenue, that is not revenue. What is it? It's a liability. Whenever you see that word unearned, that means it's a liability. And this liability will get reversed out during that two-year warranty period. The second entry that Fred needs to make is cost of goods sold and a credit to inventory, $800. That's Fred's cost for the snowblower. So coming down here in the transactions, 
On November 1st of the very same year, 2001, assurance warranty work is completed for Joe. So entry number three, assurance warranty expense. And I made it very clear that this is the assurance warranty, the, the warranty that comes with the product, the one year warranty. And Fred spent $10 on this. And uh, we're crediting things like cash, parts inventory, wages payable. It could be of various different things for $10. All right, so coming down here, we're coming down here to December 31st, 2001. The end of the year assurance warranty adjusting entry. So December 31st is the end of Fred's business year. And Fred is about ready to do his financial statements and he needs to do some adjusting entries and warranty expense is one of them. So entry number four, Fred is debiting assurance warranty expense for expected expenses that he'll have for the warranty. So for $15 and wh where am I getting that $15? Well, I'm getting it from up above here. Here we go. So it's on the second line here. Based on experience, Fred estimates one year assurance warranty expense to be $25. That's an average amount. That, that's very typical for Fred, $25. So here's what's going on in regard to Joe. So Fred has spent $10 already back in November and Fred expects that he'll probably spend another $15. So this is an adjusting entry and it's just an estimate and we're crediting assurance warranty liability, right? So it hasn't happened yet. So coming down here to January 31st, a month later, January 31st, 2002, some more assurance war warranty work is completed for Joe. So Joe comes in, the snowblower's not starting, something's wrong. And so Fred fixes it and it costs Fred $12 to fix it. So what we're doing is we're debiting assurance warranty liability. In other words, we're canceling out this credit to assurance warranty liability right here. At least we're most of the way canceling it out. And we're crediting cash, parts inventory, et cetera, et cetera. And you might say, hey, the 15 and the 12 don't match up. Shouldn't they match up? When Fred looks at all his customers, they will more or less cancel each other out. Now, on September 1st, 2002, the assurance warranty ends. So in other words, that one year warranty that came with the snowblower ends. One year has passed, but the extended warranty begins. There's no entry for that. We don't need an entry. On December 31st, 2002, Fred is going to recognize four months out of 24 months extended warranty revenue. So to put it in other words, this extended warranty goes for two years. Two years is 24 months. Now from September 1st, when the extended warranty began until December 31st, that's four months. You can count them out. September, October, November, December, that's four months. So Fred is going to claim four out of 24 months of revenue. So here's what he's doing. He is debiting unearned extended warranty revenue. Where did that account come from? That was a credit to our very first entry. Here it is. Our very first entry. Unearned extended warranty revenue, $100. That's where, so Fred, is beginning to reverse this out and claim some revenue. So Fred is debiting unearned extended warranty revenue, $17, and he's crediting extended warranty revenue, $17. And folks, I made it very clear when I labeled these accounts, I put in bold here, extended, because this is the extended warranty, not the assurance warranty. The assurance warranty, 
it was a separate thing and it what it is over with so how'd I get $17 customer Joe paid $100 for this extended warranty and four out of the 24 months have passed so 100 times four divided by 24 and it rounds off to 17 it's not exactly 17 but I rounded it off to keep things simple so coming down the page on February 1st 2003 extended warranty work completed for Joe so Joe brought the snowblower in on February 1st had to have some work done it cost Fred $40 to do this work the extended warranty expense $40 and uh, Fred used cash parts inventory wages payable Fred is crediting cash parts inventory wages payable whatever it takes to make this happen for $40 and coming down to entry number nine at the very end of 2003 December 31st 2003 Fred is about ready to do his financial statements and he wants to recognize that 12 out of the 24 months of extended warranty revenue uh, has been earned you might be wondering where's this unearned extended warranty revenue coming from well it was a credit when we did our very very first entry and Fred is now reversing it out so he's reversing it out by fifty dollars crediting extended warranty revenue for fifty dollars and how'd I get the fifty dollars well it's a hundred dollars times 12 out of 24 months that extended warranty is for two years that's 24 months and one full year has gone by the year 2003 on to entry number 10 September 1st 2004 now the reason why we have September 1st 2004 is because Joe customer Joe bought that snowblower September 1st 2001 so if you count here September 1st 2002 that's one year September 1st 2003 that's two years and September 1st 2004 that is three years in other words the assurance warranty is over and the extended warranty is now over so Fred is recognizing the rest of the warrant extended warranty revenue so entry number 10 we're debiting unearned extended warranty revenue for $33 where am I getting that account unearned extended warranty revenue well we credited it on our very first entry extended warranty revenue is being credited for $33 how to get that $33 well for 2004 we've got January February March April May June July August if you add this all up that is eight months so $100 what Fred was paid for this warranty times eight twenty fours how do I know it's 33 well another way to look at it is we already claimed 17 and and uh, recently we claimed another 50 and if this is 33 it all adds up to hundred dollars the cost of that extended warranty so ladies and gentlemen I hope you learned a little bit about accounting for warranties the key to success is is to understand that there are two different types of warranties there's the assurance warranty that comes with the product that one doesn't require a, a separate entry at the beginning but extended warranties which are separate products need to be accounted for separately and this is a good example of it um, pretty comprehensive example so if you need to go back and re-watch this thing watch it a couple of times and and you'll get it just keep in your mind that that the two different warranties are different and they need to be accounted for differently so if this video helped you guys out and you want to see more videos like this let me know hit that subscribe button hit the like button all right you guys take care over and out